Katie is driving home from school. She is tired but excited. This is the last week of her freshman year in college. It has been tough, but she has managed to pull an A or B in each subject. Just a couple more final exams to go, and she's all set to enjoy her summer vacation. She pulls onto the on-ramp to the freeway and notices her car is acting funny. Concerned, she checks her engine lights and sees the gas tank is below empty. Katie hits herself on the head for her own stupidity and pulls her stalling vehicle over to the side of the freeway and hits her hazards. She has just begun to dial AAA when she feels an incredible blow from behind, and all goes black. When she awakens, she finds herself covered with blood. She touches her nose and winces in pain. It's definitely broken. Head throbbing, Katie tries to assess the scene around her. She turns to see a car smashed into the back of her car. The driver seems to be doing okay and is exiting the vehicle and approaching Katie. However, he is also yelling. It becomes quickly apparent to Katie that the other driver blames her for this auto accident. Confused, Katie wonders how this could possibly be her fault. Doesn't the responsibility of all rear end vehicle accidents fall onto the shoulders of the person who hits from behind, she thinks to herself. Rear end car accident collisions are one of the most common types of auto accidents in the United States. Statistics show that 29% of all car accidents are rear end collisions. The initial response to a rear-end collision is that the person who rear-ended the car in front of them is at fault. This thought is held on the basis that if the driver in the back had allowed enough space between their car and the car in front of them, they would have been able to stop in time, thereby avoiding the accident. There are, however, exceptions to this rule. For example, you can show that you had no control over the accident and were exercising the care a reasonable person would give in the same situation. You were driving in the carpool lane at a reasonable speed given the speed limit and conditions. Suddenly, a car veers out in front of you, giving you no time to stop, and you hit the car. You may not be found at fault if you can prove that it was impossible for you to stop in time when the other car veered out in front of you. Rear end collisions are different than any other type of collision in that they occur while the victim is driving forward or stopped, such as at a traffic light or stop sign. Often, the victim has no choice but to witness the oncoming collision in their rear view mirror. In the Los Angeles County Superior Court case of Mendoza v. Jet Apparel Group, the plaintiff was rear-ended by a company van while stopped at a red light. He received a lower back injury and damage to his jaw. His injuries eventually prevented him from going back to work full-time. Eventually, he won his case and received a settlement of $300,000. Because of the magnitude of pain these cases caused both financially and emotionally for everyone involved in the mass misconceptions about rear-end accident laws, it is imperative that you hire an attorney who is knowledgeable about rear-end collisions.